Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor, I'm a stay-at-home wife and mom, and I share these What's for Dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully give you some new meal ideas and motivate you, as well as myself, to cook more for your family. I started doing these videos over five years ago to motivate myself because if I was sharing it with you guys, it was gonna motivate me to cook some new things and try some new things and not eat out as often. And it's definitely helped me, and I know it's helped a ton of you. I've got some really yummy dinners to share with you this week, so let's go ahead and get into it. Friday night, I cooked up a pork tenderloin, potatoes, and some green beans. So I had these lemon garlic pork tenderloins from Kroger that I got on Markdown. They're kind of small, especially if you want leftovers. So I did cook up two of them. And it says you can cook them in the bag, but I opened them up and got them in the crock pot. I started off by putting a two pound bag of baby potatoes in the bottom of my crock pot. And I seasoned those up with some garlic powder, onion salt, pepper, paprika and the juice of one lemon and then a little bit of the chef chamois garlic butter and then I just took those pork tenderloins out of the bag and laid them right over top of those potatoes and then I put a lid on this and let this cook for about seven hours on low. After seven hours, this is what it looked like. I double checked to make sure everything was cooked through. And then I just took those pork tenderloins out and sliced them up. And then I made a can of green beans to go on the side. If you like your green beans, like fresh green beans, especially cooked in the crock pot, you could have added those at the same time with the potatoes. But my family prefers canned green beans and I didn't want them in the crock pot for seven hours to get like completely mushy. So I just did them on the side. And for a meal that I was just throwing stuff together for this turned out great the seasoning on the pork was great turned out nice and juicy and it was delicious next up we tried a new recipe for lemon garlic parmesan shrimp pasta I had some lemons in the fridge and i knew i wanted to use them up so that's why i chose this recipe i'm starting off by bringing a pot of salted water to a boil to cook up eight ounces of linguine pasta and then in a large skillet, I'm going to heat up two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. And then once that was heated up and the butter was all melted, I added in some garlic and red pepper flakes. The garlic that I am using is frozen garlic. And so I just cooked it for about a minute till it was completely thawed. If you're using fresh garlic, you just want to cook it like 30 seconds to a minute until it is fragrant. Then I added in one pound of shrimp and I seasoned that all over with some salt and pepper. And then I just let that cook until the shrimp was most of the way cooked through. Then I added in some Italian seasoning and some chopped spinach, and I just let that continue to cook until the spinach was all wilted. As always, all of the recipes that I mention will be linked in the description box, so you can go there and find all of the exact measurements for these recipes. Once the pasta was finished, I drained it off and then added it back to the warm pot. And then to that, I added in half a stick of butter, half a cup of Parmesan cheese, and some parsley. And I stirred that all around until the butter was melted and the cheese was melted. And then I'm going to add that to the pan with all of the shrimp and spinach and just give that a good toss. And then finally, just before serving, I added in one tablespoon of lemon juice. This was really, really good. We really liked it and it was really quick to put together. I would definitely make this again. I didn't serve anything with this this time. And so this exactly fed my family for one night. There were no leftovers, but you could definitely stretch it by adding a salad on the side or some garlic bread or something. 
if you like wanted to stretch it a little bit maybe have some leftovers or feed a little bit more people sunday night we just had burgers i didn't even film me making them because they were the already like patted out burgers that i bought at sam's club the last time i was there so i just seasoned them up with some salt and pepper we had them on these artisan buns from aldi that were on clearance threw some cheddar cheese on there I had some tomato, there was ketchup and mustard, Andy also had tomato, and then I made a can of baked beans to go with it, and then we all had our choice of Doritos, either the sweet chili ones, spicy sweet chili or whatever they are, um, or regular Doritos. Lily has been loving those chili ones lately, um, but I think the rest of us just ate regular nacho cheese Doritos this night. But that was dinner for Sunday. Monday night we had tuna casserole, which is a family favorite and I have shared my recipe for it many times here on my channel and I will link a video down below where I made it step by step. But funny story, if you've seen my recipe for this before, you know I use cream of chicken in it. I know it's kind of controversial. Some people use cream of chicken, some people use cream of mushroom. You usually either hate one or the other. Well, I grew up hating cream of mushroom. That was why I didn't like tuna casserole as a kid. Grew up, I was like, I'm making it with cream of chicken. That's the way I've always made it because I hate cream of mushroom. Andy actually likes cream of mushroom though and like his green bean casserole. He has no problem with it in tuna casserole, but he doesn't really care either way. Well, I forgot to buy cream of chicken. Thought I had some on hand, didn't and I'm going to go make the tuna casserole and we don't have any cream of chicken. But I always have a couple cans of cream of mushroom on hand because I don't use it as often because I only use it for green bean casserole. So I was like, I guess I'm gonna suck it up and make it with this and hope I don't notice it. Like hope that my taste buds have grown and changed enough where I don't notice it as much. I didn't tell anyone about this except for Andy because I didn't want the kids to be like, ooh, mushrooms. Well, everybody ate it with no problem. They were like, yeah, it's tuna casserole. It was delicious. Of course it was delicious. And I was like, you guys just ate mushrooms. What? They were all shocked. I was the only person who actually had a problem with eating it. Andy said that I think that I could taste the mushrooms. No, I could taste the mushrooms. Like if I took a big bite, swallowed most of it, and then like I was like, oh, there's a little bit left. And I bit down and it was a slimy mushroom. I was like, trying not to make any faces to like let the kids know that I was having an issue with the food. Still don't like cream of mushroom, still will not be using cream of mushroom in my tuna casserole going forward. We will be using cream of chicken, but it's good to know that everybody else in the family doesn't have a problem with it. But yeah, we just had tuna casserole with a can of peas on the side as usual. So we always have with it. Let me know down below, are you a fan of cream of mushroom? Do you like mushrooms at all? It's one of those foods I always keep trying, but still something I absolutely hate. Tuesday night we had beefy taco rice one pot meal. This I originally saw on TikTok, but I've adapted it just a little bit. Um, I will have everything that I do listed out down below. So I started off with one pound of ground beef and I seasoned that up with some onion salt, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And I just cook that up until it's about halfway cooked through and then I'm going to add in half of a chopped onion and just continue cooking until that onion is tender and the meat is fully cooked. Then I added in one can of Rotel that I drained, mix that in, and then I add in two boxes of the Mexican style rice aroni. You add in the rice and the seasoning, and then half a stick of butter, and then just let that cook for a couple minutes until the butter is completely melted. Then I added in 32 ounces of water, or you could do beef broth if you want, but I do water and then nor beef bouillon to make it into beef broth. And then you wanna bring it to a boil. And then you can reduce the heat to like a medium low cover and simmer this for 15 to 20 minutes. 
After 15 minutes, I checked mine. Most of the liquid was absorbed. The rice was tender. So I went ahead and topped this with some cheese. You can do as much or as little as you like. I just like to cover the whole thing in cheese. I had some Mexican style cheese and then some cheddar cheese, threw it all on there. And then I put the lid on this. I had already turned the heat off and I just let this sit for about five minutes for that cheese to melt. And here is what it looked like. We like to serve this with some salsa and chips on the side. And we love to wrap up the leftovers of this in a tortilla and eat it like a burrito. That's how the kids had it for lunch the next day. It's delicious like that as well. This is super easy to put together. And I absolutely love one pot meals. I think this is the third time that I've made this particular one. And we love it. Wednesday night we had some Parmesan chicken sandwiches. If you saw the vlog that went up on Friday, you have already seen this. I just take these Parmesan herb encrusted chicken tenders. They're more like a filet, they're pretty large. And I throw them on my air fryer rack. And then these go in the air fryer on about 375 for like 15 to 20 minutes until they're done. And then you can just top them with some marinara sauce and some mozzarella cheese, throw them back in the air fryer for about five minutes until that cheese is melted. And then all you have to do is throw it on a bun. I like to use the brioche buns from Aldi. And this is just like a quick and easy meal. Um, I've made Parmesan chicken sandwiches with like homemade Parmesan chicken, but these these tenders from Aldi are just so convenient and they really are really good. Um, so I would, I would definitely recommend picking them up if you haven't already. The kids actually took one of these tenders and cut it in half and each had half of one on their sandwich and that was enough food for them. And then Andy and I each had a whole one and then there was one left over for him to take to work for lunch. So the four fillets was plenty for my family, even with leftovers. To go with it, we had salad and fresh veggies for those of us that don't like salad. And finally, the last meal of the week was a new one we were trying called ground beef orzo with tomato cream sauce. So I started off with one pound of ground beef in my pan and I seasoned that with some pepper, onion salt, and garlic powder and just started to chop it up with my little meat chopper and brown it. And then when it was starting to be about halfway browned, I added in half of a chopped onion and just continued cooking until that was fully cooked. Then I added in some minced garlic, some crushed red pepper flakes, some Italian seasoning, and one cup of uncooked orzo pasta. And I just stirred that around and let that cook for about a minute. Then I added in 14 ounces of tomato sauce, three quarters of a cup of water, and then some Knorr beef bouillon powder, one cup of half and half. The recipe actually called for heavy cream, but I had half and half on hand, so I just used that instead. And then about one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And then I turned the heat on like a medium high and brought this kind of to a nice like simmer. And then I turned it back down to kind of like medium-ish, medium low. Um, just to let it like continue to simmer for about 10 minutes. You don't want it like boiling, but you do want it kind of like bubbling, just a little simmer, 10 minutes uncovered. You want to stir it often. After that time, most of the liquid will be absorbed. I checked my orzo and made sure that it was done. And then I stirred in some chopped up spinach. I did about two cups and then about a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese stirred that in and then I just let that sit on low for like three to five minutes till the spinach started to wilt and then this was ready to eat. This was great. Everyone loved it. The flavor of it reminded me kind of of lasagna and I can definitely see myself making this again. One pot meals, as I said, I love, I love these kinds of dishes. Everything in one pot, not a lot to clean up and super quick and easy. 
to go with it. I just took some regular old bread and toasted it in my toaster oven and then put on some Chef Chamois garlic butter so we could have some garlic toast with it and it was delicious. But that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all got some new ideas of some things to try. I feel like there was a lot of good stuff in this video and a lot of stuff that we really enjoyed this week. So let me know down below if you plan on trying any of the recipes. Also leave me a smiley face emoji down there to let me know that you made it here all the way to the end. I hope y'all have a great rest of your weekend and happy Labor Day weekend and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!